In this video, I'll be discussing intermolecular forces and the role that they play in predicting physical properties of various substances. Our objective is to use intermolecular forces to explain differences in key physical properties such as boiling and melting point, surface tension, and viscosity, as well as to explain other phenomena like capillary action. As discussed in the intermolecular forces video, the three different types of intermolecular forces that are between molecules are dispersion, dipole-dipole, and hydrogen bonding, which is a special type of dipole-dipole interaction. If you haven't watched this video yet, now is a good time to go back and watch it before continuing. What's listed on the outside are the characteristics of each type of intermolecular force that influences their strength. For dispersion forces, that has to do with the number of electrons, size, and shape of the molecules. This is because the electron cloud region for overlap controls the strength of the dispersion forces. For dipole-dipole forces, it's the net dipole, then the difference in electronegativity effectively between all of the different atoms. And for hydrogen bonding, it's the number of hydrogen bonds that can form. Um, within a given set of molecules. One factor that we discussed in a previous video is that stronger intermolecular forces can be thought of as stronger attractive interactions between molecules. When thinking about physical properties like boiling point and melting point, this correlates to higher boiling points, meaning that it requires more energy to separate molecules to go from liquid to gas because they're held together in, strong, in, a, in a way that has stronger attraction. And for melting point, a stronger intermolecular force in a sample corresponds to higher melting points for a very similar reason, except this time it has to do with the transition from solid, from atoms or molecules in the solid phase, to atoms and molecules in the liquid phase. Let's compare melting points of different substances um, shown as these sets. So set one is helium, neon, and argon. Set two are these hydrocarbons. And set three are these different diatomic molecules with halogens. So based on what you've learned so far, in, within each set, which atom or molecule would have the highest melting point based on dispersion? Pause the video and think about it before continuing. As I've alluded to previously, the strength of intermolecular forces increases with the size of the atom or molecule. This is because of the surface area, effectively, that the electron clouds can interact, um, over which, which then indicates, or which then controls the strength of the dispersion force. So in the case of helium, neon, and argon, argon is the largest of these three atoms. This means, and we know that both because of its molecular mass, but that also corresponds to the number of electrons in the atom. So therefore, argon would be expected to have the strongest dispersion forces. We can apply similar reasoning to these hydrocarbons, which are all nonpolar molecules, and that the largest hydrocarbon would be predicted to have the strongest dispersion forces and therefore the highest melting point. Now in the case of the diatomic molecules listed in this third set, um, just based on intermolecular forces alone, we would expect that hydro uh, this HBr diatomic would have the strongest intermolecular forces. And again, that's because it is the biggest molecule and has the largest electron club. However, we can't necessarily rely on only dispersion forces alone because we know that these molecules in this set contain polar bonds and are therefore polar. So not, so what, whereas for the first two sets, these types of these atoms or molecules exhibited only dispersion intermolecular forces. This third set exhibits dispersion as well as dipole-dipole interactions, and in the case of HF, hydrogen bonding interactions. Let's apply similar reasoning to compare the melting, or excuse me, the boiling points of these two molecules A and B. 
I've listed their molar masses, and you can see that the molar mass of molecule A is greater than molecule B. However, the boiling point of molecule B is greater than molecule A. This indicates that we can't, um, if the molecules are, um, are polar, we can't simply base differences in boiling and melting point and differences in intermolecular forces just based on dispersion alone, meaning the relative size of the molecules in question. Let's explain why molecule B has a greater boiling point despite its lower molar mass. You'll notice that both of these contain an alcohol functional group, an oxygen bound to a hydrogen. Molecule A contains one of those groups and molecule B contains two. Now what this implies is that molecule B can actually form more hydrogen bonds than molecule A. And this causes molecule B to have stronger intermolecular forces and therefore a higher boiling point. Generally speaking, the higher boiling point of a, between two substances will always correspond to the substance that has stronger intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces can also explain other physical properties, including capillary action, surface tension, and viscosity. Let's start with capillary action, which means that, or which is the phenomenon that a liquid is drawn into a thin tube because of the intermolecular forces between the liquid, in this case, I'm showing water, and a container wall. This occurs because polar molecules adhere to polar surfaces. For example, water is a polar molecule and glass, which is a, a polar uh, SiO2 network, those things together create this effectively adhesive force that pulls the water up into the tube. If you've ever done an at-home experiment with celery or sometimes flowers where you'll put water and food coloring in a cup and see the petals, or in this case, the celery leaves change color, this occurs because the water and the food coloring are drawn up through the thin walls or the thin capillaries in the celery. Um, and this causes the food coloring to reach all the way to the very tips of the leaves. Intermolecular forces can also be used to explain surface tension. And surface tension is very cool. It explains phenomena like paper clips floating on water, explains why bubbles are round, and why certain insects can walk on the water, amongst others. Again, the big take home is the greater the intermolecular forces, the greater the surface tension, much like we were talking about with um, boiling point and melting point. Now, here's a diagram displaying surface tension on a molecular level. The blue region corresponds to a liquid, which in this case is water, and the individual water molecules are displayed as these gray spheres. The air is this white region above. Now, you notice in the bulk of the liquid, the water molecules are attracted to each other via dispersion, dipole-dipole, and hydrogen bonding. In other words, this center water molecule has these intermolecular forces with all of the surrounding molecules. On the surface of the liquid, however, the attractive forces between this so-called center molecule that are experienced are different than in the bulk, and this causes an imbalance of forces. The diagram illustrates the importance of intermolecular forces or the reliance of this on the attraction between molecules um, and therefore to the liquid, particular liquid surface tension. So again, the stronger this attractive force between molecules, the higher the surface tension of that particular liquid. Based on what you know so far, would you predict water shown on the left or acetone shown on the right to have a greater surface tension? Pause the video and consider this point before continuing. Water is a polar molecule, which means it exhibits dipole-dipole interactions. Of course, it also exhibits dispersion because all molecules exhibit dispersion. Water contains hydrogen bound to a small electronegative atom, which means that water can also experience hydrogen bonding. Acetone is also a polar molecule, meaning that it exhibits dipole-dipole interactions and dispersion, 
But oxygen is not bound to hydrogen in this molecule. So that means that this molecule, acetone, cannot um, exhibit hydrogen bonding. Based on this, we would expect that water would have a greater surface tension than acetone because of its stronger intermolecular forces, meaning contributions from hydrogen bonding. You might think that acetone would have a greater dispersion, greater contributions to dispersion forces, and you'd be right because acetone is a larger molecule. However, the hydrogen bonding in water um, it, uh, induces a greater intermolecular force between water molecules, which causes the water to have a greater surface tension. Intermolecular forces are also related to viscosity, which is the resistance of a substance to flow. Stronger IMFs correspond to greater viscosity. So on the right-hand side, we have very viscous substances, and on the left-hand side, we have substances that flow easily. For example, motor oil, which is shown here, has a relatively low viscosity. Honey, somewhere in the middle, has an intermediate viscosity, and substances like toothpaste have a very high, high viscosity. They have a very high resistance to flow. Now, looking at these three hydrocarbons, how would you rank them so far based on what you know about viscosity? Pause the video and consider this point. So all of these hydrocarbons contain the same number of carbon atoms, but the carbon atoms are arranged differently. Now, because they contain only carbon-hydrogen bonds, we know that all these molecules are nonpolar, meaning they exhibit dispersion forces. They have very similar molar masses, because again, similar numbers of carbons and hydrogens. And, um, but they're, they're, again, their structures are different. We have a linear hydrocarbon in structure one, and in structures two and three, we have branched hydrocarbons, meaning the carbons aren't connected one after the other next to each other. Instead, they're kind of branching off of other carbons in the, in the molecule. So branching means that the molecules have um, less overlap between electron clouds. So for example, two molecules of structure three would have less overlap, less surface area of interaction than two molecules of structure one. So this means that structure three contains the weakest dispersion forces and structure one contains the strongest dispersion forces. So we would expect structure three to have the lowest viscosity, structure two to have an intermediate viscosity, and structure one to have the highest viscosity. So this would correspond to answer choice B. Intermolecular forces are fascinating because they help us to, con uh, to, to understand different phenomena that are in the world around us. One of which is adhesives and paints, another detergents and household cleaners, and even things like biomolecules and DNA and the proteins in our bodies. The properties of these various substances, their physical properties, are controlled by their intermolecular forces, which makes this a very applicable topic to everyday life. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.